we come, God, asking you to watch over us, God, and teach us, God. I come asking you that I decrease, and God, you increase inside of me, God. Let this Sunday school lesson be a part of my everyday life, God. Let us live towards doing what you have us to do and being who you have us to be, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord Jesus, just be with us through the lesson, God. Take us, strengthen us, lead us, and guide us, God. And we forever give your name praise, honor, and glory to say we love you and we thank you. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. The title of our lesson this morning is coming from John 4, 25 to 42. And the title of the lesson is Call to Evangelize. And before we read the, the lesson, I want to do a little bit of background about the lesson. It's coming out of, I'm reading from John, 1, John 4 and 1, talking about um, John, I mean, Jesus as he has left Judea going through uh, Galilee. He was on his way to Galilee, and on his way to Galilee, you have to, it's a, you go through Samaria, and usually the Jews don't go through Samaria. Usually the Jews don't go through uh, Samarian because the Samaritan, who the people was in Samarian. But Jesus went straight through Samarian. And the, the Samarians was people around them that the northern Jewish kingdom who was, they was in, in a marriage people, foreigners, and they was exiled and they built separate worships, separate per places to worship. And they was just exiles from the Jews. They was just different people. And the Jews looked at them as being different people. So they didn't really want to be around them. They didn't want to go through their town. So they went all the way around not to go through the town. So Jesus being different as he is, he going to do what Jesus does. He going to go, go through where people expect him, other people do. He's not going to do what other people does. So he went straight through there. And on his way through there, he went by Jacob's well. And on his way going by there, he went through by Jacob's well. And it was about the sixth hour, the hottest time of the day when he went by there. And as he was going through there, he, he felt the need to have water. He was thirsty. So that was the natural part of him. So when he got there, he seen a woman there. When he got there, a woman came up while he was there to get water. And so as, as he approached, as she approached her, he asked her, ma'am, uh, can you give me some water? And she told him, who is a Jew to ask me for water? You, we, we don't talk to Jews, Jews don't talk to us. He said, but if you knew who I was, you would ask me for the water. So, you know, sometimes when we approach people, we might not know what they need or why they need it, but everybody needs something from somebody. So we ought to be in a state of no matter who we are or who we approach, whatever, they might have what we need and we might have what they need. And at this time, she had the water pot and the thing to draw the for the wet water, and Jesus needed that. So when we approach situations, sometimes we need stuff from people. And we shouldn't look at their color, we shouldn't look at their race, we shouldn't look at their male or female, we just look, should look at a person needed need something. So do we, do we look at people different? So is we different, or we, we see people being different than we are, and that's why we don't witness to them or say anything to them? So you know she had to be different because she was a woman, and she was a Samaritan woman. And the time that she was at the well, it was at the, the hottest time of the day. The hottest time of the day. So you know she was being treated like an outcast at the hottest time of the day. And usually when women come to the well, they say they come in the early morning or late afternoon. And when they do come, it's like a gossiping box. They come to tell their life and they come to talk about their life. And you know, she, she was there all by herself. Nobody was around her. She didn't have nobody to talk to. So. So she was being treated like an outcast. And I say, how do a Samaritan women look today to us? Samaritan women look to us today. As us being women, being an outcast, or people not want to talk to you, or not want to be around you because of, of what they think about you, or what they feel about you, or how you look, how you dress. 
You know, her being there by herself, you know, they had to have some, some deep stuff. Her own people, not just the Jews, but her own Samaritan people outcast her. You know, she was already outcast with, with the Jews. Now she's outcast with her own people. So. Sister Teacher, that's a, if we really look at our society, we have to ask ourselves, and you, that's a great question, because as far as women, how do you see women who may be outcast, uh, shunned, uh, uh, looked at in, in a different light than all the other women? And, and what we have to be careful of is that we don't do that in the church. Right. Because it's easy for us to set certain guidelines and criteria that we start looking down on people and not reaching out to them. Right. So we can ask that same question for us. Uh, from the church perspective, how do we treat people like that lady was treated at the well? Because in reality, that's what it is, because Jesus is the church. You think about us being spiritual, and, and having the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, how uh, does the church look at the world and how do we keep them at a, a, a arm distance? Can we become so legalistic like the Jews were that we can hinder people from coming to, come to Christ Amen. or reaching out to them? Amen. So how do we judge people? Yeah, we get like that. That hinders us from what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just so like someone, even in the church, and they do something wrong, and one person find out and call the next person, the next person, and before you know it, every, the whole crowd is against that one person. Mm -hmm. When we should be reaching out to help that person up, mm -hmm. you know, uh, let them know they don't have to wall in the mud. Right. There's a better way. They can get back up and keep on going. That's right. And just like this lady at the world, where she had a bad reputation, the women they won't be bothered her. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, because she was, she was, she wasn't a nice lady to them. But right. they wasn't looking at what she needed. They right. were looking at what she done. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, we as people, we can be so thirsty for the word. And you judging me so much that you don't even realize that I am thirsty. I'm, I'm looking for something. But you done judged me so harsh mental that you don't even want to talk to me. I don't know who to talk to. So we shouldn't be judgmental towards people. We shouldn't always look at people as on the outside. We should look at the inside of that person where their heart need to be changed. And once a person's heart changed, God does the rest. You know, it ain't up to us to try to go in there and feel around and put our judgmental on it you know, what's going on with her, some of the stuff that's going, that they say about her, but they don't know why. You don't know why this happened or this happened. This is about her then too, when Jesus tell, told her to go call your husband, go tell your husband. And she replied, I have no husband. And he said, I know the one you're living with, not even your husband. See, that's the outer appearance of people knowing her life story. And then they judge her about her life story because women outcast her like, I guess they thought she, she liked men or she want everybody's man or whatever they seen in her that they didn't want to really be around her. And so they was outcasting her, but she could just need a talk from somebody or she can just need someone to talk to her or listen to her. That's why our testimony is so important that we share our testimony with people because that can just change their life. And we'll see in this story how her little one testimony changed the people's life. And so Jesus said, yeah, that's true that you're not your husband. Then she, the Samaritan woman started talking to Jesus about worship. You know, when he come, he gonna tell us where we gonna worship him and what's going on. And so he was telling her, I, I know I am the Messiah. So he was letting her know who you waiting for is right here face to face with you. I'm face to face, I'm here for you right now. So that goes to show us too, you never know uh, who you are talking to or you never know who gonna show up in your desperate need of time or life, you know. We look at it as her being in the, at, at the wrong hour, the wrong place, and the wrong people, but God turned around, I'm, she in the right place at the right time for the right person to touch, touch her life in her thirsty life of being. You know, we always say, you ain't in the right place, but she was right, she was in an unusual place, but she really deep down she was in the right place to get what she need from who she was coming to get it for. She was coming for one thing, but God turned it around for another. Like I said, we can lay down sometime at night in our desperate place and wake up the next morning, God can change our whole life. Just like her, her life,
God changed her whole entire life in one night. She laid down as one woman, but when she got up and went to that well, she was a totally different woman. As we read from verses 25 through 42, we pick up at verse 25 to 42. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then the disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her or why you are talking to her? The woman left the water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come see a man who told me everything I did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came screaming from the villages to see him. Meanwhile, the disciples were Urging Jesus, urging Jesus, Rabbi, to eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, my nutrients comes from the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages, and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awakes both the planter and the harvester alike? You know I say, one plants and the other harvests, and it's true. I send you to harvest where you did not plant. Others had already done the work, and now you will get to gather the harvest. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said what the woman had said. He told me something I, I even did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in the village. So he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because, because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the savior of the world. I was reading from the New Living Translation and she was letting Jesus, Jesus was letting her know who she was looking for was right there. I am, I am the Messiah. And I asked, why do you think that Jesus out of all the Jews, let her know that he was the Messiah. Out of all the places he had been, he let her know that I am the Messiah. None of the other Jews that he had been around knew that he was the Messiah, but he let her know I am the Messiah that you're looking for. Because she was curious, because she was, that's what she was, they was waiting on. So I guess this is what they was waiting on to hear and to see the Messiah face to face. You said, why did, why did she believe him? Why did she, he witnessed to her, Jesus let her know that I am the Messiah. He said, I am the Messiah. Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Well, you know, Jesus can read minds. He knew what she was thinking. <laughs> yeah. You know, he, she, he knew what she was thinking. Yeah. He said, I am the Messiah out of all the from verses, the first chapter in John to the fourth chapter, nobody knew he was the Messiah. Yeah, and you, you have to remember that the Samaritans were the outcast of the group. They were the half, they looked at them as being half breeds. They don't intertangle and intermarried with the Babylonians when they went into captivity. So now uh they were worshiping at a different location, uh Mount Gizmore, Gizmo, Gizmo, I think that's what it was. They, they had a different, you know, that's, a, that's what the dialogue and the conversation was about, right. where it, one was worshiping in Jerusalem, in, at the temple, and other is in the mountain, and all that, and Jesus was trying to convey to her, and she needed, sometimes we need something different. Right. We need something specific mm -hmm. for him to reveal who he is to us, and he knows what each person needs in order to help them to go forward in order to be a witness for him. Mm -hmm. Cause, cause you remember that she's she, where well, you get on in your lesson. She's going she's gonna be the one to go right. proclaim. Right. So she had to have no doubt right. that he is who he says he is. For the, to 
change her spirit and in truth. He wanted her to know through the spirit and I am true. Yes. Yeah. Just then the disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a, talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask him, what do, what do you want with her and why are you talking to her? They, the disciples were so gun ho on what they believe and what they knew that they ain't even giving Jesus a chance or people a chance to, to be who they were. You know, they just wanted to, to why are you talking to her? You know, she a Samaritan, she a woman. Why are you talking to her? I mean, they didn't even realize that Jesus is different. Jesus talked to whoever he wants to. Jesus don't look at who you are, your color, or anything. Just like when he was talking to her about her husband, he didn't come in on her about her husband. He come in witnessing to her. He could have scripted her down about the men, but he did not do that. He come in there change for a transformation of her life. He didn't come in there to, you know how people come in trying to tell you everything you done done and everything they done heard. Jesus did not do that. Well, Sister Teacher, he didn't come with the thou shall not. <laughs> he came with forgiveness and mercy and grace. Uh, it, and in this, in this first, these first couple of verses that you're talking about, what really got me was that, that the way Jesus opened the conversation and when he said, go tell your husband. Well, he knew she, he knew all about her life. Right. He, like you said, he could have went with all the dirt first. Right, but he did. And said, thou, you, you can't do that. You. Mm -hmm. But he gave her the opportunity to be honest and open. Right, yeah. She said, I don't, don't have no have husband. husband. Right. He said, you said it well. Right, right. See, she was already open to hear the truth because mm -hmm. she was truthful. Right. Uh, and then it lets us know that, that everybody can't be around sometimes when Jesus shows up to work in somebody's life. Everybody's not ready for it. Some of us still hung up on tradition. Jesus talks about the tradition of men. And you know, he encountered that all the time with the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Their tradition, their culture, their, what they've been passed down through years. Jesus didn't come from that angle. Uh, he came from an uh, 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 angle of forgiveness and mercy and grace. He came into people's lives to change them. Right. They went to condemn them. Right. And what we don't want to do is find ourselves in our lives condemning people. Mm -hmm. And we don't want the church to be a church that condemns and looks at all the negatives and say what you can't do versus saying what you can, can do. do. Mm -hmm. We got all the rules on what you can't do. Right. But what can we do? What can we do? We can be a witness. And we can tell our testimony. You know, we, we don't want to really say nothing because sometimes people think their testimony is embarrassing or it's not right or I can't say it right. But God comes for us to tell our testimony. God comes for us to tell people what's going on in our life and tell about him, what he did, how he changed our lives so other people's lives can change. God came for us to tell it. And the woman left her, her water pot behind at the well and ran back to the village telling everybody. She left her, her source of her water and everything and ran back to tell about it. She left it. And that's, I thought about when the, he was disciples trying to get the disciples in, they left their fishing rods and boats and all that. When God touched your life, you leave everything because you ready to tell it and you ready to tell it how God showed it to you, that you changed and you want everybody to know the excitement excitement in our life we got to have excitement sister sister teacher I, I still want to get to this right here when jesus you know he said that all the, I, and i got to think about this he sent all the disciples away to go get food, food. Mm -hmm. i said why somebody didn't stay there with jesus you know that's what i was thinking i just my, my think but they were not ready mm -hmm. for the level he was going mm -hmm. he needed to go to to get this lady to where she needed to be mm -hmm. because culture and tradition right. so had them bound mm -hmm. that even though they had been with Jesus, they still wasn't where they needed to mm -hmm. be in order to be there to hear that. See, first thing, if they would have been there, you know what they would have said? You know, we ain't supposed to be talking to women. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> they would have yeah. messed up. Yeah. And then she may have been hesitant to even talk back if it was two or three men there. Right. But because it was one. Wow. But 
the seventh one, I read it. When I was reading, I said, seven is the number of completion. And when she met that seventh one, she got completed. It complete her life because she ran back to tell him. She didn't walk back. She ran back to tell him. She was so excited to tell him. We got to be excited about uh, telling what God did. We got to be excited about our testimony. Exciting that he changed us. Exciting that we know he's going to change us. We got to be excited. And she was excited. And she said, come, come see. And could this possibly be the Messiah? So the people came screaming from the village to see. They come running. So they must have seen that it was sighted. And then some of the commentary was saying that she went to just men to tell the men. And, I, and as I read, sometimes the men gather together. They be standing around in little plots. I guess the women be at home. But then some of them say she tell everybody. And they say, I said, men or women, whoever, all of them come running. So it was, she was excited. And meanwhile, the disciples was urging Jesus to eat, eat food and and Jesus replied, this kind of food you know nothing about. They didn't even know about it. The years they had been walking with him and talking with him, they didn't even know what kind of food he was talking about. And he was talking about really being about his father's business. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. They was thinking naturally, but God was going spiritual with them. Just like with the woman was thinking natural with the water, but God was thinking spiritual of changing about the water. And they was thinking naturally with the food. Talking about, did someone bring him some food uh, while we was gone? And Jesus, then Jesus explained, my nutrition comes from doing the will of God who sent me and for finishing the, his work. He was telling them that his, his, him being a witness to her and the Samaritans, they was ready. And uh, he was ready to witness to him. And he was fooled up just by witnessing to her. He was fooled and he was ready to be a witness to others. Sister Teacher, now, this is the question. How do we perceive every opportunity we have? Do when we uh, have an opportunity to witness uh, everything we come up with, every ministry we set out to do, is that ministry uh, 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 earthly, looking at earthly realm, or uh, is it dealing with the spiritual realm? And Let's say, let's use us giving bags out at Christmas. What's the, what's the purpose of that? Is it to, it, do, when we think about that, and when we want to do that, is that to touch lives? Is it deeper than what the, the we, you know, when we, when we get ready to do something, do we think about the spiritual implications of what we're wanting to do? Uh, is it something to fulfill a physical, just the physical need, uh, the gratification of the flesh that we're doing? I, I guess it's the gratification of the flesh because um, do we look at it spiritual of getting that bag? I, I don't look at it spiritual. See, and, and that's that's the kind of things I think that where we have to change our outlook uh, in doing ministry in the church. church. And when we're doing ministry in our own lives and reaching out for people, mm -hmm. everything we do should be motivated, the Bible says, by love. by love. And the only way that can be motivated by love is that you have the Holy Spirit living in you. So everything I set out to do, if I'm thinking about it from the perspective of how is this going to touch somebody's lives? How is this going to be a witness to them about Jesus? That changes the way I uh, go after doing everything I do. Right. Uh, let, me, let me use an example. The other day you, you carried my sister a fruit tray. I had called her to see if she wanted something because I was going to carry her tray. She said, no, Sister Charlotte called me and said she's going to bring me a tray. And she called me back. She said, Lord, have mercy. That's Sister Charlotte. She bought me a tray. She said, she said I know somebody killed me. <laughs> but I'm saying, now you think about when you do things like that, you're thinking about it from the perspective you love that person. You want to reach out to that person. You want that person to know 
So that should be our mindset on everything we do right. when we're doing it for people. Right. It's not what we can get out of it. Mm. Not the benefit that we're going to get back. Right. But it's how can I show the love of Christ in my life right. to touch somebody else's life. Right. Show them that it may not be me there, but it could be me there. That's and I it. just want you to know that we care about you. We, our family is thinking about you. And whatever we can do, I'm there to do it for Because I have my physical being to do what I need to do for somebody. That's the way I think about it when I do something for somebody like that. Yes. That they need, they need us. You know, yes. people need us. And the church need us. And people we meet, like, we can't look at who they are, what they got, if, if they can give back. You shouldn't look at people if they can give back. We should look at how God has blessed us to give and to help. A ministry, like you said, to minister to somebody, to let them know when you're down and out, your family is there for you. It might not be your physical family, but we are your family, your church family. We're there for you. Yes, yes. So that's the way I look at it is when I give. And that's just who I am, too, as a giver. You know, I, I like to give, and I like to be there to, to help people. And they time of need, because people going to have times of need. So I just like to be there. Yeah, and, and this is what Jesus was doing for the Samaritan, the uh, Samaritan woman, and her need, and her her quest to, to be filled up. She she was so empty, and she wanted to be filled up, and he was just there to let her know, I'm here to fill you up. And you might, they might look at you as an outcast, but I look at you through the spiritual eye. We got to open up our eyes spiritually yes. when we talk to people, not look through the flesh or not look through the natural. We got to look through the spirit. Because that's, that's the way you see people different when you look through the spirit. And when you look through natural eyes, you're not going to be able to see them. So you got to look through the word. Because if, if you look through the natural, oh, they got it. They don't need this or they don't need that. But God said, don't even look at them like that. Look through people through the spirit. Because everybody needs something. Everybody needs a helping hand sometime. So we got to look through the spirit. And you know the saying, the four months between planting and harvesting, but I say wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe and ready. And when I read that, I was saying, <laughs> Jesus was saying, look, you see these people on their way? They, they racing to get here. Look, you know, when he was talking to them, he said, the harvest is on their way. Look at them. They on their way. They coming down the road. They ready. They come to the well to meet the person for us. You know, we sit there, we, we ponder and whatever. Jesus said, no, they already ready. The harvest is already ready. I already done planted it. Now we get ready to harvest it. We're getting ready to ripe it. So come, come on. The harvesters have paid a good wage for the fruit that the harvest is the people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. What joy to know that you didn't even have to really work the harvest, but you're going to reap what everybody else, we, we reap it together. It's not like you do this and you do that. It's like we all reap it together. You know, like when we do our testimony, it might not be my testimony for somebody. My testimony plus your testimony and somebody else's testimony, it's not just going to be you. You know, we look for just us being the harvesters. It might not be that way, but it all comes together as God letting all of us reap through it. You know, you know, I witnessed to her. I did this. Uh -uh. That ain't what he's saying. He's saying all of us going to reap this together. We in this together, no matter what. And this is the first time I ever see it about good wages paid. It says, paid you good wages and the fruit that the harvest is people brought to eternal life. It's about people being brought to eternal life, their soul being changed, everybody being changed. What joy, what joy awakes the both the harvest, the planter and the harvester alike. That's why I said we all gonna reap it together. It's for all of us, not just for one person. One person, you know, and I thought about us coming to church, people coming to church, when people come to church, they, they ready. They, they waiting on somebody to just call, like Reverend Law called, call, altar call, people come up here. They ready. They, they had already been out there. Somebody done planted seed, plant yeah. things in their life, and they ready, and they start coming up here. They ready, and we just got to grab hold to them and talk to them and keep them where they need to be kept because they ready. You know the saying, one plants and the other harvest, and that is true. I sent you to a harvest where you did not plant. Others had already done the work, and now you, you would get to gather the harvest. It, it had already, they was already ready, but, but we passed, they passed by them all the time. The Samaritans was already ready, but they, they didn't know they was ready because you go around them all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the way we are. We go around stuff, and, and we dodge people, but they already ready. They ready to hear the word. 
They're already ready. But we go around them so we don't know. We don't know what to say. But they're ready. For, they're ready. They're ready. And he sent them. He said, come on, let's do this. Because I, it's already ready. Let's go get it. Let's go get it done. It's somewhere you didn't even harvest and you didn't even plant. But I am inviting you in so you can come. Come help us. Come do it. Let's do this. And the disciples was like, I say to myself, like, sitting back, like, what? Yeah, get, let's get this harvest on. Let's get these people, these thousands of people that's been waiting for these years that you disconnect yourself from because of tradition. You disconnect yeah. yourself from because of who you thought they were or what they did or what they didn't do from their color, their race, or because they're women or whatever they are. We disconnect ourselves from people. And we shouldn't do that because they are ready just like we're ready. Just think about our lives how what we went through and what we've been through. People can disconnect. They really know our lives from where we come from to now. They might want to disconnect from us. Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> we ain't always been where we at now. We ain't always had our life buttoned up. You know, everything buttoned up to the top. <laughs> we missing a whole lot of buttons and, our, you know, getting buttoned up. I was telling my husband come to church, I said, you know what? We ain't always been buttoned up. You know, we get on our children. But I think about, I was missing a whole bunch of buttons one time, and I had to have somebody connect me. I didn't know about testimony. I didn't know about what Jesus had done until somebody came in my life and told me, you need to button that button. Your button is not button. You know, and that, that hurts when they tell you that, but it's the truth because they see that your life, your life ain't always been good. I think sometimes we get amnesia, <laughs> you know, because, and then I wonder sometimes do people just, of shame, of, of, you know, we should be glad to tell somebody, you know, I, I had that problem, but let mm. me tell you what God did for wow. me. Wow. You know, and he did it for me. He can do, do it, it for, for you, you too. Amen. And I believe we go through things so that we can be a witness mm -hmm. and we can be a, a convincing witness. Yes. If we had it and then someone else is going through it, mm -hmm. we can help them and let them know that God will bring them through too. too. Mm, bring them but out. sometimes I think we get amnesia. We mm -hmm. act like we are, like you said, we always been what we are, but yeah. we haven't been. Mm -hmm. And we're still growing. That's right, Miss Nancy. And like I said, we don't got everything buttoned up in our life. We don't. We're not all buttoned up. Many of the Samaritans from the village believe in Jesus because of what the woman had said. He had told her everything. They believe of her because of her testimony. They believe because of what she had said to them. But when they came out to see him, they begged him to stay, stay in the village. So he stayed for two more days, long enough for, for more to hear his message and to believe. You know, her sharing her testimony and sharing her life brought a whole lot of people out, and they believed. But then, too, they wanted to hear it for themselves, and he let them hear yes. it for themselves. Your yeah. testimony is good, but it's even better when you hear it for yourself. And that, and that, I had a question at the end. How has our faith changed our life? How has our test, testimony to someone else changed someone's life? How can we change someone? Because this lady changed people's life. Even though her life was messed up, as we call it at the beginning, but at the end when she got in touch with the right man at the right time in the right place, hey, her whole life changed. She changed. And I can imagine them people seeing her totally different because they ran out and they told her. They all said to the woman, now we see and believe, not just because of what you told us, but because of how we heard him for ourselves. Now we know that he indeed, the savior of the whole world, indeed mean it ain't no misinformation, it's the truth, true information. So they come to believe not just because of her testimony, but because they came out to see what had changed that lady's life. So her life was changed through her testimony. And all of us have a testimony. All of us are called to evangel evangelize. And us evangelizing is just sharing our testimony, just sharing what we know and how he has changed our life. That's our testimony. That's all it is. You know, we look at it, we try to put labels on it, but it's just God wants us just to tell people that we don't have all our buttons together. Tell people that we need help as well. You got something what I need, and I got something what you need. So we just, we got to know that we, we got to help people. We, are, we got to help people too, so they can change. Our lives change, so God don't have no respective person. So if he can change them, he can change us. Yes. But we got to be willing to change. And she was, she was rare ready, and they didn't even know she was ready. She was ready to change, but nobody came by. People don't come by. People don't, 
want to come by, but these, these Samaritans, they changed. Even her being an outcast, she became a true believer, and she wasn't no more outcast. She was an outcast at the beginning, but when she became a true believer, no more outcast. So we got to know that Jesus can change our life. If we want to change, he can change us. And he changes from the inside out with our testimony. So if we got a testimony, let us tell our testimony. Let us tell what he has done for us. Let us tell that we ain't always had it together. And we still trying to get it together. We ain't complete. We still missing some buttons That's sometimes. And it. we ain't complete. Mm -hmm. But if we keep trusting in him, he's going to complete us in eternity. And that's what we're really talking about, eternal life. Our life change for eternity. Because this is not a home. We all just passing through. So we know that he's going to change us. And here, he wants us to change. So when we get there, we, we be what he has us to be. Amen. Amen. So let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this lesson, Lord God. I thank you as you let us all know, Father God, we ain't all got it together, Lord God. We ain't all buttoned up to the rim, God. But we know that we have someone that can change our lives, God, that can give us a word that make our life change, make us be brand new. So, Father God, I just want to say thank you, God, as I stand here that you come in my life and my testimony that, that I changed my life from where I was to where I am today. And I just want to say thank you and let people see people through the eyes of you, not fleshly, but God, spiritually, God, that we change, God, from the inside out. And I just want to say thank you, God, that you, we know that you can change us from the inside out. And I just want to say I love you and I thank you. God, keep us, strengthen us, lead us, and guide us. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.